you, Mr. Speaker. Would you please ask the clerk to report the committee sub one, please? Clerk, please report. House Committee Substitute 1 to House Bill 3. Lady from Maiden. Thank you. Mr. Speaker and Honorable Body, House Bill 3 has been referred to as humanity in health care. Some have stated that the intent is to eliminate abortions in the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and my response is, is that we have already done that with the heartbeat bill, which this honorable body passed during the 2019 regular session. Rather, the intent of House Bill 3 is to ensure that while abortions are legal in Kentucky, we want them to be as safe as possible. There are several sections in this bill, and for the sake of people watching today, I ask for your indulgence to review each. According to Kentucky Annual Abortion Report Summary from the Department for Public Health Office of Vital Statistics for period 2017 through 2020, Kentucky averages 13 children 14 years of age and younger that have abortions annually. At a time when parents do not want their children to take an, a, an aspirin in their schools without their consent, and when the U.S. State Department estimates that 400,000 minors in the United States are involved in human trafficking, this measure states that physicians must exert attempts to ensure that parents of minors seeking an abortion are consulted. Section 1 amends HR KRS 311-732, which is the protocol for a performing an abortion on a minor. Kentucky already requires the parental consent of one parent or legal guardian or the acquisition of judicial bypass, but the amendment boisters the requirements ensuring the safety of minors seeking an abortion. Legal and parent guardian consent, the physician must not only obtain parental consent, but the parent's identification must also be on record. The physician must also now sign an affidavit stating, stating that they secured proper parental consent. The amendment also removes the ability of the physician to delegate the responsibility of obtaining proper parental consent to another agent. The judicial bypass piece, the amendment raises the standard of who means the merits to obtain a judicial bypass if parental legal guardian consent is not in the best interest of the minor. Not only is age factored in the evidence presented, but the court must also take into account stability, credibility, and demeanor, ability to access responsible and life impacting consequences. The court must also ensure that the minor is not seeking an abortion as the result of influence or pressure from an outside source. The court has to find a clear and convincing evidence that the minor is mature, that the abortion is in the best interest of the minor, and that the pregnancy is not a result of abuse by the parent or guardian. Financial reasons cannot be used as evidence, and the court will now report by the, will now report by the Legislative Research Commission the number of petitions filed and the reason of judicial bypass was granted. An exception for medical ex emergencies is included but the treating physician must notify the parent or guardian within 24 hours. The minor will not be held responsible if the regulation is violated. Section 2 amends KRS 311-595. As part of enforcing the new regulations on performing abortions on minors, the physician who performs an abortion on a minor without first obtaining proper parental consent may be subject to disciplinary, disciplinary action by the Kentucky Board of Medical Licensure. Section 3 amends KRS 311-990, and the physician who knowingly performs an abortion on a minor without parental consent will be guilty of a Class D felony. Section 4 amends KRS 213-101. Pro pro abortion providers are required to report all abortion procedure procedures to the vital statistic branch of the Cabinet of Health and Family Services. However, no oversight exists to review the data for violations. The amendment grants the Office of the Inspector General oversight of abortion reporting, verification, and compliance. The Office of the Inter Inspector General will perform an annual audit of the information submitted by the abortion providers for reporting deficiencies. The information audited will not include any identification information of the patient. 
The audit will be submitted to the General Assembly and to the Attorney General, and an inpatient report will be given to the Interim Joint Committee of Health, Welfare, and Family Services every year. Another section is chemical abortions. In December of 2021, the FDA modified a 10-year safety regulation under the Risk Evaluation and Mitigation System, other words known as RIMS, allowing the abortion pill to be sold online and through the mail. Prior to this decision, the FDA RIMS prohibited the abortion pill from being dispensed online or in pharmacies and required the pill to be dispensed in person in approved clinics or hospitals that would properly date a woman's pregnancy, rule out deadly ecoptic pregnancies, and offer or refer for emergency care in cases of complications or when abortion pills, their failures resulted in incomplete abortions. The modifications of the REALMS programs consist of removing the requirement that the abortion pill be dispensed only in certain healthcare settings, specifically clinics, medical offices and hospitals, referred to as the in-person dispensing requirements, and adding a requirement that pharmacies that dispense drugs be certified with the manufacturer. Chemical abortions is a serious procedure that takes several days and requires in-person evaluation, administration, and follow-up care. Mayo Clinic states that a woman needs at least two in-person appointments before and after the abortion to be a candidate for chemical abortions. There are many procedure and drug regimens that are not appropriate candidates for remote telehealth administration, and the chemical abortion regimen is one of them. This bill codifies long-standing medical practice standards and the FDA regulations such as independent verification of pregnancy, in-person dispensing, and RH negativity treatment if needed. Courts have repeatedly held that, the states may that states may regulate abortion to protect the human's health and safety and to gather public health data. This bill address addresses those needs specifically to chemical abortion, which sometimes differ from chemical abortions, uh, excuse me, medical abortions, and certainly differ from other telehealth uses, none of which intentionally end the life of an unborn child. This bill specifically redacts identifying to ensure that the woman's pregnancy privacy is protected and only includes professional information on the doctor filing the report. The public and especially women considering abortion have a right to know if facilities are not following the law and have high rates of patients suffering from post-abortion complications. England announced that effective midnight on August 29th that they will return to pre-pandemic requirements arrangements removing the approval allowing women to take the abortion pills for early medical abortions at home. This bill will effectively do the same thing in the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Sections 5 through 18 regulate the administration of medical and chemical abortions. Medical abortions can only be administered by a physician and cannot be sent via mail. By mail. The physicians providing medical and chemical abortions must have proper credentials, an emergency transfer agreement, and a signed contract with other physician, another physician who is able to handle complications if they arise. The physician must examine the patient in person, verify the pregnancy, determine RH factor, inform the patient that they might see the baby's remains during the abortion, and determine the gestational age and a location via ultrasound. Schedule a follow-up appointment seven to 14 days following the abortion. Show reasonable efforts were made to schedule an appointment if the patient does not return. Valid informed consent must be obtained by the physician 24 hours prior to a medical and chemical abortion except in the case of a medical emergency. Although informed consent regulation exists, the amendment adds additional information be given to the patient and edits the informed consent form which physicians must provide to the patient to sign. Valid informed consent requires the physician to pro provide the gestational age as determined by the patient's medical history and the ultrasound. 
the patient to receive a detailed description of the steps to complete the medical abortion, an explanation of risks and complications, and information about the possibility of the abortion pill reversal. The physician must also ensure that the patient is not being coerced or forced into having an abortion, and she can withdraw consent at any time. With new requirements in the protocol to receive a medical chemical abortion, the reporting requirements must also be updated. The monthly termination of pregnancy reports submitted to the Office of Vital Statistics will be amended to include the county of residence of the patient, whether a follow-up exam was scheduled and completed, if any complications resulted from the abortion, and if complications occurred, the physician is required to submit a report separately detailing the complications. As of June of 2021, approximately 400 Planned Parenthood centers perform chemical abortions, of which 223 provide chemical abortions only and do not perform the surgical abortions. As a matter of clarity, this section states that the previous regulations cannot be construed as creating a right to an abortion. The physician is subject to a civil malpractice case of professional disciplinary action if they do not follow the new medical and chemical abortion regulations or properly obtain informed consent from the patient. The patient can file a wrongful death suit. I'd like to point out, too, that 51% um, of the abortions in Kentucky were conducted chemically. And for the record, there were 4,104 abortions in Kentucky last year. The Cabinet of Health and Family Services will create a website and publish printed material about the abortion pill reversal process and where patients can find a provider who offers it. All of the information collected from the abortion and complication reporting will be annually submitted to the General Assembly and available to the public without any identifying information of the patients who had the abortion. In order to monitor the distribution of abortion-inducing drugs, the Kentucky Depart Board of Pharmacy, the Kentucky Board of Pharmacy, will create the Kentucky Abortion-Inducing Drug Certification Program. The Kentucky Abortion Inducing Drug Certification Program will require all distributors, manufacturers, and physicians to be certified before handing and handling abortion inducing drugs. The program will perform annual audits and immediately, and immediately suspend certification if noncompliance is discovered. The physician is required to be in good standing, licensed, and cannot give the drugs to a patient with certain risks. They're also required to report any deaths as a result of using abortion-inducing drugs. They also now have to submit a report that details the protocol of how a medical abortion complication will be handled. The certification program also requires that the certified physician have hospital administration privileges, hospital admitting privileges, a written agreement with any physician who can handle complications if they arise. The penalties for not following the new regulations outlined regarding this program, the manufacturers or distributors are, subjected, are subject to a $5 million fine, physicians are subject to a $250,000 fine, and individuals have the right to seek restitution in any court. The Kentucky Board of Pharmacy will create a website that lists all the certified distributors that will include a compliant protocol. Another section is in regards to fetal remains. In early 2019, the Ohio Attorney General Mike DeWine communicated findings that Planned Parenthood had disposed of fetal remains in Kentucky landfills, which caused many of us great distress. Sub subsequently, in May of 2019, the Supreme Court of the United States upheld a petition filed by Indiana in support of their fetal remains language. The intent of this bill is to model the language passed by Indiana in 2016 and upheld by the Supreme Court of the United States in 2019. Section 19 amends KRS 213-081, which is the protocol for transporting and cremation of human remains. The regulation now includes fetal remains and states miscarried fetuses may be cremated simultaneously. Section 20 amends KRS 213.96, which regulates how hospitals report stillborns after 20 weeks gestation. 
The amendment requires any abortion or stillbirth any mis um, uh, after 20 weeks be reported on a birth death certificate or stillborn, stillborn certificate and al also request the name of the father on the certificate. New regulations outline how a baby's body should be handled after the abortion and allows parents to decide how to bury their child. The abortion provider must inform the parents within 24 hours that they have the right to take responsibility or relinquish the responsibility of their child's remains. If the patient has a chemical abortion, she will be informed that she might see the baby's remains during the abortion and can choose to return the baby's remains to the facility. The Cabinet for Health and Family Services will create a form to track this process. This amendment also prohibits the baby's remains from being disposed of as medical waste or sold in any way. Section 22 amends KRS 367.97501 to say that fetal remains are not to be included in pathological waste. Public funding, the Section 23 amends KRS 311.715 to tighten regulations on the use of public agency funds and clarifies that all monies are public funding regardless of the original source and cannot be given to any institution that performs, induces, refers for, or counsels for abortions. Complications, Section 24 creates regulations for hospitals, healthcare facilities, and physicians to report complications or death as a result of an abortion complication. Section 25 amends KRS 311.774 so that for each prescription issued for an abortion-inducing drug, a report form must be signed by the qualifying physician who provided the abortion-inducing drug and transmits, transmitted to the cabinet. The report will include the drug administered complications or adverse effects and level and type of intervention required. <coughs> Section 26 amends KRS 311.783 so that the physician who submits a report provided by the cabinet at the minimum, the information required for Section 4 of this Act, the unborn child's probable post-fertilization age determined by the physician and the result of the inquiries of the pregnant woman and any medical examination or test performed. Section 27 amends KRS 315.990 to allow the Attorney General to demand from the Governor of any state the surrender of any person founded in, in, found in other states who is charged in Kentucky with the crime of violating sections 14 and 18 to this act. Section 18 is to allow the General Assembly to appoint members to co uh, who sponsor or co-sponsor the bill to intervene if the constitutionality of this act is challenged. We also have severability and we also have section 20 that is cited as humanity and health care. There's also an emergency clause. And Mr. Speaker, at this time I welcome comments and questions then call for the passage of House Bill 3 as amended by Committee Sub 1.